Misha, thank you so much for taking the time to have a conversation about you and Nodal and everything that's going on in this crazy world of, you know, being connected within Web3. I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Action, for uh, inviting Nodal uh, to, to actually to participate to one of your interviews. So excited to be here. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to feel special and say, you know, I only invite the cream of the crop and they're the only ones that get to talk to me. But I'm a pretty open guy. And ultimately, the reason why I reached out is because I like you guys. I really do enjoy what you guys are building. And I love being able to connect with people that are doing good things in Web3. And I think that, you know, a lot of people know Nodal. They know what the technology is all about. But what they might not understand is why Nodal is here in the first place and who's behind it which I guess I have, you know, a prime opportunity to ask you, why in the world did you start this project in the first place? Um, it's a great question. It may take a little bit of time, but uh, I'll try to, to keep it concise. Uh, we, we have many whys, but I would say the origin of the project is uh, when my one of my co-founders, Garrett, uh, and I realized the power of uh, what we call the, the smartphone infrastructure. Um, so today you have this very trendy uh, technical term in Web3, which is decentralized physical infrastructure, uh, DEPIN. Um, and uh, we, uh, we, we fall into that category, obviously. Uh, but the, at the origin, it was really about the smartphone infrastructure, how powerful it can be. And the way we got that realization was through a, a past project uh, uh, that... Uh, uh, Garrett and I worked on where we, we created a messaging app. Uh, it was called FireChat, and it was enabling people to message each other when there is no internet. And uh, by pure serendipity, um, this app, which was designed originally for burners, so people who go to Burning Man to enable them to stay connected, ended up being used in so many uh, pro-democracy protests around the globe. And uh, I was um, in Hong Kong when actually uh, the students used the app to organize what uh, they called, uh, what became, sorry, the, the Umbrella Movement and help these people stay connected. And we had half a million people install the app uh, over a week. Uh, and I, I saw this technology in action, basically. I saw a peer-to-peer -peer mesh network, which was solely built uh, using smartphones working live and making magic happen. Uh, and also giving hope to all these uh, these students. And uh, I was myself blown away by the power of the smartphone infrastructure that we could see in action. Um, everywhere I was going, I could receive notifications on my phone of, oh, user nearby. And I said, wow, it's really, really, really working. And um, so strong of that experience that continued after during other events, uh, disaster recovery situations or other similar kind of events, um, I mean, my co-founder and I were still thinking, what, wow, this is really, really powerful. There are so many things that can be done by leveraging the smartphone infrastructure. Uh, and that's, um, that led us uh, back uh, in 2016, 2017, beginning of 2017, to actually build a prototype uh, of a node that would run on smartphones uh, and would enable this kind of applications to be built. And that's how actually Nodal started. And uh, there are many reasons why we uh, wanted to do that, uh, leveraging a Web3 infrastructure, leveraging a blockchain infrastructure. Uh, it, it, it was because we knew that to, uh, to keep this node alive on a smartphone, we needed an incentive that would always be there for the users. And uh, that's why we created uh, Nodal. That's why we created this um, um, token, the Nodal token, uh, that people can generate by maintaining a, a node active on their smartphone. And then um, there are so many think, uh, we be, things we believe that can be done on a smartphone, um, especially in a decentralized infrastructure, that cannot be done uh, with uh, nodes that are in the cloud on computers. And I can come to the details of that if you want. Yeah, right no, now, I, 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 I completely agree. I, mean, I think a lot of people miss the point that sometimes as far as like the technology is concerned that computers are stationary, they sit inside of a room, they don't have the number of sensors that phones have. So. Yeah, there is definitely way more applications for somebody that's holding a hand like a handheld device with from a gyroscope to temperature sensors to everything else that it kind of, you know, is built into it. So, yeah, I, I think that is a big, big deal that a lot of times gets overlooked. Um, let me just ask you one quick question. 
uh, how did the did you get connected with Gar you know Garrett because you and him are not very similar not very similar looking not you don't speak you know like each other you're very different all around he's got tremendous hair i'm not saying anything about that i actually love his hair um but you guys don't seem like you would be co-founders together well, you should look at also other co-founder, Elliot. Uh, we're also very different. And I, I think that's what's great about people. You can, uh, I have admiration for Garrett. Uh, I have admiration for Elliot. And they both have uh, qualities and skills I don't have. Uh, and uh, I admire that. They're also uh, much younger than me. And I always uh, like to reward and actually cherish the, the youth and the energy of young people. Uh, and um, I think it's part of our DNA. It's uh, we want actually people to dream big and use that creative energy also that you find often in young people, uh, which is announced in young people actually, and and, and let this uh, this power of creativity, this imagination flourish. And uh, and um, I think they both have that actually, which is uh, I'm so lucky. It's uh, pretty pretty amazing. And so Garrett. Uh, was still in college when uh, he contacted me. I think it was back in end of 2013 or beginning of 2014. Uh, and he was um, doing a pitch on a way to share music uh, using mesh networking on mobile phones. It was something that he was dreaming to build. And when I saw him pitching, I said, wow, this guy gets it. He gets the power of uh, what can be done at the edge of the network leveraging smartphones. Uh, so he, I, I remember he was working um, or contributing to a project at Google, which was Project Ara, uh, which was actually a modular smartphone that Google worked on. And, um, and then we had a long conversation on the phone and uh, uh, I said, well, what do you, do you want to do an internship with us? And uh, it started as an intern uh, and then he dropped college and, uh, and basically stayed working together. So it was pretty That's cool. amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, that is so awesome. I, I, I call a dropout myself. I totally get it. And man, I, I, let me thank you on behalf of every young person out there that there are people in this world that like don't look down on people because of their age. I was working at a Fortune 500 by the time I was 19 years old. Um, people were going out to the bar and I'm like, I don't have an ID, guys. I can't, I can't go there. And, you know, I got so much crap. I don't know how to describe it, but people just you know, look down on me because of my age, yet like I knew way more than so many of these people that had been there for years and were just, you know, writing that cushy job. And I'm like, no, no, we, let, let, let's make things happen. Let's change things. Let's make things exciting. So, man, thank you for, you know, being that voice of reason out there um, that is willing to listen to all of these, you know, innovators that might not look like it just because of their young age. Now, does Elliot's dog count as a co-founder as well? He's part of this. <laughs> she is part of the story. <laughs> Eva oh. is, uh, I think, uh, actually helped Elliot in very difficult moments. And uh, she's often in the office with us. Uh, we love her. Yeah, so she's part of it. She's part of that's it, awesome. definitely. That, that, that's and, really but Elliot cool. is the same story. It's the same story with Elliot. Um, Elliot and I met uh, through, uh, I mean, I often chat with uh, developers, hackers, and um and then one, one, one guy connected us because we both had a thick French accent. They say, oh, maybe you two should have a conversation. Um, and that's how we connected the first time. Uh, I was probably looking for some, some resources and skills. Uh, and, um, and we met online. We started to work uh, remotely. Uh, Elliot was still studying at university. And, um, and I remember once when we launched the first uh, Nodal app, it was for the... HTC Exodus, so which yeah. was the, one of the first ones dedicated uh, to blockchain uh, and Web3, where you had actually a, a Bitcoin miner on the phone. Um, and uh, we were going to release an app uh, with, on this phone pre-installed, the first version of the Nodal app. And, um, and I was in Paris. Elliot uh, was helping building the app. Uh, and we did a small video while I was in Paris with him. And... Uh, and I said, would you join uh, full time? And uh, Elliot was still studying and uh, he did not hesitate. He said, yeah, let's That's go. That's awesome. It. So you, you, you make people drop out of college. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for that. I think they are both uh, grown ups and they, they take their own decisions. But uh, it's, um, 
No, I think it's a, yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity to start so early. I personally think I pushed my studies too long and I should have started much earlier when I was uh, hacking around and uh, encoding when I was, uh, actually, I started when I was eight and I did that till the age of 15. I should probably should continue. So, um, yeah, and, no, uh, more, more power to you. I don't, I, don't, I don't regret my experiences nonetheless, uh, but uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a very it's important for everybody. thing. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I think that a lot of people look at, um, you know, staying in school as a way of not not being challenged or having to get out there and get a real job and be, you know, be challenged to make sure you can do something to pay the rent, to create something new, to make something exciting. And obviously, both Garrett and Elliot are doing incredible with the product that they've put out. I mean, the ACC Exodus was a long time ago. You guys, you know, this is not something new you guys have been doing this for a long time and they're still at it right we uh, we have a, a long time experience and uh, the first time we were approached for building um, on blockchain was actually by the early um, original gangsters of bitcoin who were starting to promote uh, colored coins on the bitcoin blockchain so uh, it goes back from uh, yeah, a long time i think we were starting to mine we were mining in the office uh, in my previous company in 2012 um, on Treasure Island, which is the island in the middle of the bay in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, that's and, that's and so I'm, awesome. And I'm pretty and I'm pretty sure some of my great partners at the time, uh, who uh, were doing a lot of open source code in the in, in the space of uh, peer to peer, are probably responsible for the Bitcoin white paper that ended up in the iOS code, you know, recently. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, recently discovered. It's been there for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been there for a while, but covered recently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the photo was taken on Treasure Island, actually. And I don't think there were many tech companies at that time on this island. So I'm pretty <laughs> convinced that uh, it was one of, one of us. <laughs> That's really so, cool. The yeah. But things have changed, right? I mean, you just mentioned the Nodal app. It, it has been around for a while. It, it doesn't look anything like it used to. Like, what's happened with it, and where does it stand today? Um, so the Nodal app is progressing fantastically well, uh, thanks to I think the, the amazing team contributing to it, and to uh, Florent, uh, who is uh, our VP of um, of product. Um, and the dynamic is great within the team. Um, the, the most recent release. Uh, include the support for minting an NFT pretty fast, actually. It takes uh, less than three clicks uh, or just three clicks to, to mint an NFT. You, it creates automatically a mini website that you can share with anyone, even if you don't have the Nodal Wallet app. Um, and uh, and we are working to do, I mean, more. I mean, maybe you saw recently the, the stats also that explained very well why you are rewarded by maintaining the Node Active. I think that was a very important element it was a lot of work to to actually to, to put it off and um, yeah so the team is really doing a fantastic job uh, and keeps on, on innovating there today we we just released the bulk nft feature so for any creator or someone like you and me or someone who wants to basically reward people with a, a simple digital asset can uh, mint a, an nft uh, or a creation uh, and then have an easy way to distribute it through um, through a simple uh, link or uh, QR codes, and uh, and you don't need to be very technical to do it. It's, it, it can be done very very easily. Uh, and uh, so I invite anyone, especially people who like to reward people who participate to events, to actually uh, try the feature and, uh, and and use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to uh, add a little form to this video and mint an NFT for anyone who, you know, requests one and submits it. Uh, they'll, they'll do a little form so we can have a little fun with that so people can try it out. That would be, that would be amazing, yeah. Use, I mean, use case, right? I mean, I think that's what it's all about. A lot of people talk about tech, but they never actually get to use it. So why not? You know, uh, it's Nodal's there for, for a reason. And I love when we get to actually use cool technology. Um, and talking about use case, I mean, you already have a, a working successful use case right now. Is that right? Yes. So the, um, before I get to that, maybe let me um, get into the details of why we think what we do is uh, is so important and uh, sure. will spark hopefully uh, 
uh, more creations and uh, and more uh, interesting things in the Web3 space. Um, and that comes from this very uh, difference between uh, computers who run nodes uh, in the cloud and actually a smartphone. And uh, smartphones, as you mentioned, they have radios. So you have Bluetooth, you have uh, the Wi-Fi radio, you have the cellular radio, uh, you have sensors, uh, you have, uh, so basically, an accelerometer, you have a temperature, uh, you have the GPS for location. Um, and these are all resources and capabilities that traditional, I mean, normal computers in the cloud do not have. Uh, do not have. And uh, in addition to that, the smartphone has a real person behind it, and it's mobile. So we uh, we worked very hard to create this infrastructure, which is the nodal network, uh, and we want builders uh, to be able to create the equivalent of what are smart contracts in the traditional blockchain and Web3 space, where you can actually run small programs on computers in the cloud that executes uh, uh, instructions, but be able to run that these on the node on a smartphone. And we call them a smart mission. And that's really the core difference of what we are building. And we think it's going to create and spark a lot of uh, ideas from builders, developers, uh, businesses, uh, to actually uh, leverage this uh, network of smartphones to, to, create, uh, to create things. And as you mentioned, we have our first uh, successful use case. Uh, we started by leveraging the Bluetooth and so the radio uh, in your phone, so the Bluetooth low energy. Uh, and uh, one of our big customers is an insurance company. They, uh, what they do is when you buy a car at the dealership level, you, if you subscribe to their insurance service, they uh, send you a, a big beacon. So it's like a big Apple AirTag uh, that goes into your car. Uh, and they use uh, that, um, that beacon for locating, your, uh, for locating your vehicle in addition to other, uh, other ways to locate the vehicle. Uh, but it, speci it specifically also help when uh, your vehicle gets stolen. And uh, more recently, they actually started to find their first vehicles that were stolen in Europe. Uh, and they, are, they have 50,000 cars uh, deployed with the system. They are growing to 200,000 cars by the end of the year. And then on the trend to be to over 2 million vehicles that will be uh, using the system. And what happens is any, users, uh, any user of the Nodal app any uh, subscriber to this insurance who uh, who um, has the insurer uh, application uh, or any partner app, basically, when they are in proximity of uh, a vehicle, they capture the encrypted identity of that vehicle, they tag it with the location of the phone, with the time, and send that information directly to the insurer. Uh, and that's working today. Uh, it's live. And we think that um, now that we have a really successful use case, we will be able to uh, replicate that with, uh, with more companies and businesses. And that's just one use case. And uh, I don't think you, you, you do nodal justice sometimes because that this is like you guys actually made a sale. You got a company to sign up and pay you to use the network. Um, that's what you're calling a use case here. But I know way more about Nodal than people realize. Like I usually give out 10% of the knowledge that I actually have. Um, something I know you guys ever actually use these smart missions for um, was at a conference in Brazil. Um, and like it worked there as yeah. well. And I mean, that's a use case and people don't even think about it. Like you made it work. People were using the app there, weren't they? So in Brazil for Blockchain Rio last year, we did something uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, we had six, 7,000 participants and uh, the participants who were coming to our booth could be redeemed with a, uh, with a QR code, uh, a coupon to actually purchase uh, food. Um, so they were scanning with their uh, phone the, the coupon. It was transmitted, transferred to their wallet with a, has, a, has an NFT. Um, and then they could use that to buy food. Uh, yeah, and it worked pretty well. Yeah, I mean, that, that, well. that's the thing. That was, like, another, that was another awesome uh, yeah, application in the real world. You yeah, don't cool. give yourself justice. Like, you don't do yourself justice. Like, that is really cool. Like, uh, tell me somebody else that's doing that right now that's implementing this kind of tech. And I can't think of anybody else doing it as well as you guys did over on Rio. 
Um, so it's that that's a cool thing. And why I love the, the network itself so much is that it's multifaceted. There's a lot that you can do with it. And um, and I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll leak this. But when I've spoken with Elliot, um, they're always, you know, his his thing is like, you know, uh, connecting things. And it's always things. It's never phones or Bluetooth specifically. And I think, you know, when I press him on it, I was like, so we're not talking about just connecting phones, right? We're not just talking about connecting Bluetooth. We're talking about connecting everything because why not? The network is stable. It works well. Why don't we connect more things? Why don't we leverage all of the features on the phone from, like I said, the, the gyroscope to, you know, the Wi-Fi and get all of this data working for people that care about that data? Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not asking you to reveal everything that you guys have up the sleeve, but oh, yeah, camera, too. That's a huge one. Like this QR code is actually very powerful. Yeah, there's I mean, one, yeah. of, one of my favorite, you know, digital wallets, um, you know, does it's it's air gap, which means that it doesn't have any connectivity to anything. All you can do is charge it. But the way it connects with the outside world is a camera. And it is so powerful when you have that type of tool in your hands and people forget like nodal network is literally a network to connect things not just a phone bluetooth connectivity right um so can you tell me what Absolutely. else you guys are going to be connecting well we we like to say we we are connecting reality which is the real world um we can connect uh, things so um, iot devices sensors uh, we can connect a uh, stream of data because some of these uh, app uh, appliances or devices actually uh, can generate data themselves and then push the data to the cloud through the network of smartphones. And, and we can also connect people. And, uh, and that's, um, that's how we create value, uh, by basically being able to connect all these things. And uh, with people, uh, we haven't touched on that. It's something that will come probably later. Uh, but we can, um, we, can, we can add a lot of value uh, by, for example, proving that people are at an event, but with a real proof, because we can use wireless signals for that. We can use interaction uh, between devices. So we can really create a real proof that someone was in a specific location with other people and, uh, and then have people build their own private social graph, these kind of things. We, we haven't touched on that. It's going to take some time. We have a, uh, other things we can execute before, which are uh, easier to, to do. Like, for example, um, what is keeping us very busy these days, it's actually authenticity. Because we, we have this node, which is a really a trusted um, environment today. We had a, a lot of people trying to, trying to game the system for a long time. So we de developed that expertise and, uh, and uh, actually unique capability of uh, keeping the integrity of the node on, on the smartphone. And thanks to that work, uh, now we can authenticate content like videos or photos. And that actually very, opens uh, basically a realm of a lot of applications, especially with AI that's uh, becoming more and more uh, present. Um, we're going to see more and more problems of fake content. Uh, and we can really, uh, with, with Nodal and, uh, and this uh, Nodal node on the smartphone, actually authenticate data or authenticate content that is created that's all and people don't have to scan their irises to, to authenticate that no need to scan your iris no <laughs> that, that's good you can, that's stay, good. you can stay you can you can stay anonymous where in that case uh i mean with a public uh, with a public key and uh in that case um, basically it's just the certification is just that the content you are creating is a uh, is authentic uh, and potentially in the future, if you want to attach some uh, social identities to your public key, then you can start to actually add reputation to the content you are creating. Yes. So um, here's something that is uh, going to be a little controversial. I've talked to people in your team and I said, well, why don't you just identify X, Y and Z within the app and then you're good to go. And the, the they come back to me and they basically say, yeah, that's not going to fly with Misha. He, he's not going to go for that. I mean, he's not going to let anybody review who's behind the phone. Like that privacy is way too important um, for him. So that's just not going to work. And in this world that we live in today, 
people, you know, overlook privacy and they take it for granted. I don't like I know how important it is for me and I want people to understand why it should be important for them as well. So why is it that you do yourself a disservice? Because let's be honest, if you can collect user data, you can make way more money because everybody wants to buy that stuff. Why are you not willing to compromise on those values um, and, you know, miss out on the opportunity to make more money? Uh, we are not dry, driven by um, by actually generating uh, revenues initially. We are building this to become a big ecosystem that can create a lot of, a lot of value for people who are going to build on the ecosystem. And we have, uh, yeah, we are pretty, very much attached to freedom and freedom of uh, expression and the freedom to keep your privacy if you want to keep your privacy. So um, if you decide to reveal some elements of uh, who you are, then it's a, it must be a conscious decision. And that's fine too, but it's a conscious choice. And I think it's very important for a, a Web3 project and because we, uh, we want to also live in a world uh, uh, that we like, so uh, that uh, we, we create tools that enables us to live in this world uh, and that we like, or actually uh, uh, we try to build something that we would like to live in. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's very, very important, yeah. That, I mean, that, that, that's great. And again, it's one of the reasons why I like you guys. You know what I mean? I think it's very easy for people nowadays to compromise their values over um, a quick a quick buck I, it's the best way for me to say it and the fact that you guys are willing to stick to it even though it can be detrimental you know detrimental when it comes to generating revenue is awesome um it, it does pay off in the long term and that's what i've seen in this space and i was just talking to some people about how you know a lot of projects that were here two years ago are gone and you can't find anything about them you can't find the people that were running them Yet the people who are, you know, have those those core values instilled in them and in the project, well, they're still around. They're still building, um, and I don't see them going anywhere. And when I say them, I definitely mean Nodal because you guys are still here and you're making really cool stuff. You got more things coming out. Um, and talking about more things coming out, I think you guys, you know, just de deployed a, a new Nodal map. Um, what's going on on that front? Um. So uh, I just want to touch on the, the commitment. So uh, yeah, so first we, are, we have been committed to build, uh, um, to build and to protect people's privacy and from the very beginning. And, and yes, we don't want to compromise on that. Uh, second, uh, we, uh, yeah, we believe it's going to pay off in the long term. Uh, we believe that uh, we can create so much value by having uh, this network grow and, uh, and keep on growing. Uh, that uh, once people realize what they can build on top of it, it's going really to unlock the flying wheel. So more people will want to join because they will be able to benefit from uh, the network and more people will want to build on it, which will create more value. Uh, and so we really believe in that. Um, we released recently the, the network.nodal.com, which is a map uh, that shows uh, on the map the, the coverage of the active nodes uh, and uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty entertaining visually. You can see uh, the world is divided in tiles, uh, H3 tiles uh, when it comes to the technical term. And you can see how many times uh, a node passes through that uh, specific location over the, the course of a, a month or 15 days. Um, it's still early. I think uh, the good thing is we're already getting results uh, and we can achieve great things. Uh, and um, and uh, but I think it's yeah it's just it's just the beginning, and it's uh, uh, I would say something which is important in the use case of the location of assets, for example, because you need density for that. But uh, uh, this is absolutely not required um, for uh, authenticating content. So we have use cases that require the density, but we also have a whole other number of uh, use cases and application that won't require actually to have any density, like authenticating uh, content on the node doesn't require that, for example. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, the, that the, the applications that's... are vast for sure. And, and that, that is like what I, keep, what I keep going back to is like, it's a nodal network. And then there's things being built on top of that. Um, and I think people lose sight of that sometimes. They just think I have my phone out and Bluetooth is turned on, so I'm gonna go ping things around me. And I think there's just 
that that's 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 being very narrow minded um, with what I know about nodal. Like when people ask me, let's go. Like, oh, so this is like your your heliums or, you know, with IOT and anything along those lines, like, sure. And then there's more to it because it's it's not just that it's not just pinging things that are around you. Um, you're not, you know, the nodal network is not the the air tag network from Apple, right? It's way beyond that. It does more. It can be more. Um, and I guess this is the I guess the, the fun part of the questions that I kind of want to ask you, what would you like to see next? Um, I know that you have your your pattern like, OK, so th we're going to do this thing next because it's easier to do than the people portion of it. But if you know it wasn't a problem and you could pick anything to be ready tomorrow, any part of the network that you want to see built, what would that look like? Um, well, I would like to see the development environment for developers and builders be uh, be open and have um, anyone being able to actually um, program this network and, and send their smart missions to the network. I think that's the big difference between us uh, and an Apple AirTag service, for example, where uh, if you are a manufacturer of IoT devices and you want to benefit from uh, uh, the Apple AirTag uh, functionality, you're going to have to respect the specs from Apple. You solely depend on the Apple. You have to integrate that in your own hardware, what Apple tells you to do. In our case, uh, we basically, you, since it is a programmable network, which makes such a big difference, uh, you you can adapt uh, the the network. Uh, I mean, you can adapt uh, the nodes and send instructions through the smart mission, and the node will automatically learn how to communicate with your own devices. I give you an example uh, because you can also compare the network to what Amazon did with uh, Amazon Sidewalk. Yeah. So. Same thing, Amazon Sidewall has specific specifications if you want your device to be compatible with it. But Amazon could come to Nodal and say, oh, I really like uh, the presence you have on smartphones and your network. And they could decide to do a mission which would be an Amazon Sidewalk mission for the Nodal uh, network and then deploy it on the Nodal nodes. And now any node would be able to communicate with a, a device that's compatible with Amazon Sidewalk. Just yeah. in a couple, in a, probably in a, in a few hours, and that is extremely powerful. So, uh, uh, and and you cannot do that if uh, in the Apple world you cannot do that in the Amazon world, uh, you cannot do that in the Helium world. Helium is a, well, it's a different network. It's a different wireless application. It's using uh, LoRa One uh, or five G now with Helium Mobile. Uh, but these are more access network. They are not programmable networks. So uh, I have plenty of ideas on like deploying, you know, uh, essentially, you know, a project, the business on the nodal network. And I think it all boils down to the fact that it is programmable. It's not locked into anything. Um, and I'll, I'll say here, if anybody wants to build this, go for it. But you can literally grab your AirTag and figure out what the Bluetooth ID on that on that device is and create a smart mission that will track that Bluetooth ID through the nodal network and all of a sudden you can now track uh, AirTag on the nodal network. That's totally doable with how open your network is compared to, you know, trying to integrate an Apple product with Amazon, right? So Apple uh, luckily uh, does a good job at privacy. <laughs> so we have to at least uh, give them back uh, the, the good things they do. Uh, uh, and uh, they, they randomize really the idea of uh, your Apple AirTag. So uh, you, we would be able to spot uh, we, an, an Apple AirTag. Uh, tie it to yourself would be probably more difficult unless, uh, unless basically we would have access to more information within Apple. So it's, uh, yeah. So they, they do at it, least a good job at randomizing the, randomizing the ideas. Yeah. You can, I mean, there are ways I'm sure to hack into the system and be able to identify that Apple AirTag. Some people have done it. Indeed. So if you go that deep and uh, you could do these things, certainly. Yeah. What I'm looking at is these guys want their ecosystem to stay very pure. And the new thing that they, they're doing now, AirTags, they just kicked it off. That was just the start. They're now allowing um, third party devices to integrate with Find My Eye, right? So what's yeah. happening is that these new devices are now paying Apple royalties to participate in that Find My Eye. Um, 
program, which is, yeah, sure, it's it's cool. It makes that that ecosystem more robust and gives opportunity to, um, you know, new developers to put their products on that platform. But ultimately, it's still a very closed ecosystem and most of the world isn't using an iPhone. And like, that's where I kind of have issues with it um, is like, it's not open enough, right? Like a lot of these places, it's just not open enough and definitely not decentralized um, at all, at all. So, absolutely, you know, absolutely. you guys come along, you're a win. Absolutely. I think we have a, a big win on the long term on this uh, for applications which are more uh, industrial or business and enterprise related. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I mean, it's still a very good business for Apple. I mean, they're, I think they are making more than a billion dollars with the, with the air tag. So it, but it, but it kind of proved the market and the potential for, for the, just the application of locating assets, um, and, and and Bluetooth low energy applies to many um, industries where cellular or LoRa one doesn't work. So we have more and more people now coming to us, because actually when it comes to location of assets, actually LoRa one doesn't seem to be that efficient, and they were falling back more and more on solution involving uh, Bluetooth. Uh, and uh, and then when it comes to cellular, it consumes a lot of more energy. It's more expensive. So, for example, um, a very simple industry, I mean, old industry, which is uh, shipping pallets, they tried lower one, they tried uh, cellular. But the, the best way to actually uh, do a good job at locating pallets, uh, and you have actually something like 6 billion units a year, uh, would be a, a simple Bluetooth tag. I don't know if you saw what we released um, a month ago, the, the, the open source design for uh, Nodal N1, which is a nano computer. It's a very, very uh, slick design of a sticker that has Bluetooth encryption and various sensors like accelerometer, temperature, pressure. I may have maybe a sample here. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I have one of the samples here, basically. So it's, uh, it's very thin. I mean, it's still in the package here. Yeah. But, I was about uh, to say, if you could flip it over, because I don't think people realize it's a sticker. It's a sticker, yeah. I and have like, it you can, yeah, it's so I cool. You can do so, so much with it. But, but I mean, the size is really just this. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and and we, we, we can't wait to see people, um, manufacturers, take this design and basically be able to print them. Uh, in millions, and then we can end up with a, uh, the tag with a cost that could go below a dollar, probably even below 50 cents at some point. And uh, it makes it a very fantastic disposable device. It has eco-friendly battery. We could add support for uh, solar also, so it could have a solar panel on one side. Uh, and uh, and then, like you said, that, that way you could connect anything. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's the future. And I think we're not very far from that at all. I mean, you better believe it. Like when I travel with gear, like camera gear, like there people will spend a lot of money with tags to, you know, tag every single piece of equipment that they're traveling around with. If I could have my phone have that smart, you know, smart mission set up to always locate my devices and I can just slap a sticker on every single piece of gear, maybe a lens, a camera, a piece of lighting equipment, whatever it is that would be a dream so you you're not targeting you know any specific industry you're targeting the general public i mean the the applications are endless when you think about it oh well, it, there's Absolutely. just way too much opportunity you know um that i don't think people are seeing right now they they are everybody that looks at it they're like okay so when when token go up like that's the unfortunate world that we live in like i think that we were infiltrated by, you know, uh, traditional finance and all of a sudden people are like, yeah, uh, so w are we going to make money on this token or are we not going to make money on this token? And they forget that, yeah, some people just create a token to generate money and it's the easiest way to do it in this space. Let me tell you, if you see, you see any project going, we're going to launch a token and there's no utility behind it, it's a money grab. Like they're just trying to make money because it's really easy to do that. But then yeah, when you have projects perfect. like, yeah. But you guys actually have for, a utility. The reason you have a token. 95% of crypto projects out there, yeah. 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 So like, w but when the token is used for you to be able to not only mine it by providing data, by sharing, um, you know, 
whatever. Like I, I don't I, see, I, I get in this thing. Like I want to say get Bluetooth connectivity. It's, it's way more than that. By just, you know, providing data back to the network, you now have the tokens that you can now use to locate your stuff. So there's real world case scenario where we can do this, like on a, my daily life. I can't tell you how many times I, I, I misplace things in my office. And, you know, with with Bluetooth now, you can literally pinpoint Bluetooth, you know, 5.0 and above. You're just like, oh, it's right there. It's a foot away. That would be incredible. I mean, I would probably have a couple of hundred tags in my house alone easily. Um, and I just can't wait to see, you know, where the technology goes from here. So I, I appreciate that 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 thought process of like where nodal would be best suited because it, yes there are a lot of options but i can see myself using that one yeah i think we all could i mean if you you have a, a sticker that can help you uh, track any item um, even when you send a regular mail you could just or box you could just have your own tag there and you wouldn't be collecting information about where your package is probably you would do a better job than the rapid courier themselves. Uh, and then you would be able to recover it if it gets stolen. Or, uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting. That's, that's revolutionary. I mean, you, you just like, so not a lot of people know this, but I actually have a fulfillment business um, that pays some of my bills, right? Um, that is cheaper than tracking sometimes that I pay for some of the packages. Not only that, insurance, if they have something like this, the price to insure a package that they can pinpoint its location later on, it would drop like it would, you know, it would be so cheap because they wouldn't be losing things like they do now. They'd be able to grab a phone and go, it's right there. I can find it like it's, you're it's it's much more than that is not only do you provide a better service and user experience to your uh, customers because they have uh, better information. You remove a lot of the claims and then you add a, a, on top of that a great value add service where you can eventually recover that package uh, if it gets stolen. Yeah, it's it's a win-win win all point. around. All yeah. around. Man, this is so awesome. All right. Um, I want to make sure that I'm cognizant of time, but how do the, I, I'm sure there's a million one ways to get involved with nodal. Um, you know, I'm sure developers are out there going, wait, I can do this with this network. It's already out. It's already out. It works. Um, but let's talk about the regular, the general user, you know, the people that are, you know, out here in crypto going, yeah, everything is dying. What do I do? Um, how can like just the general public get involved with the nodal network? What if um, if you have a smartphone, which is basically almost anyone, if you are excited about innovation, if you uh, are excited about building things and technology, uh, you can just download the Nodal app and it takes 90 seconds to be part of this network and to start to see uh, actually rewards uh, arriving on your wallet and you can see the stats of uh, why you receive these rewards because you Basically, you're going to see that you are active and you are contributing uh, with your phone to the network. Uh, and then you can start to mint your first photo NFTs, for example. And, and then we're going to bring more, um, more active missions. So we will also enable um, uh, developers and builders to push uh, active missions to the, to the wallet. So you will be able not only to, to, uh, to participate by building the network and having a node active on your phone, but you would be eventually be able to, to complete a mission and be paid by a brand for completing that mission. Or, um, and I can give you a very simple example. It can be uh, a media company who uh, uh, wants to pay you for taking a video at an event. And then the node can make sure that this video has been taken in the right location at the right time certify the authenticity of that content, and then you get paid by the media company for having taken that video, for example. Uh, there is one I would love to see at some point on the network, uh, which is more between the community of users who use the Nodal Wallet, which would be to send to your friend uh, a mission, a challenge, for example, which can be, oh, I, I love my friend, I want him, because I know it's good for his health, I, I, I want to actually reward him with uh, an NFT or with just uh, the token. So money, if uh, they, he runs uh, 20 miles a week. And uh, if my friend accepts the missions, then he, he would be able to participate 
and uh, automatically the the smart mission, which is like a smart contract, would release the the money to my friend if he basically it is uh, confirmed that he he run uh, 10 miles a week for maybe a period of time that you can decide. So uh, we we can do s- stuff that are pretty uh, interesting. Uh, Wow, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit, isn't it? When you're talking about a network that is capable of doing so much with so little. Um, and personally, I really appreciate the fact that I can grab, you know, one of any of the four phones that I have here. They may be old, but it, it still works, right? You're still able to use it on the network. That's a, a really cool thing for me. You're not trying to, you know, go out to manufacturers and say, hey, go build something for me right now and let's all make money off of a, of a miner. You're, you're, leveraging existing technology that people already have in their hands. And that's, that's a big deal too. So we did um, release uh, recently an app that's called the Node Hotspot. Uh, re- exactly touching on what you said is, uh, so you can recycle your old Android phones and turn them into hotspots. You can link them to your Node wallet on your main phone uh, and then um, be rewarded for maintaining this Node active uh, remotely. And so you can collect these rewards remotely on your main wallet. And that way you can re- recycle Android phones. So you don't need to buy a miner or to buy a specific additional device. Just recycle your old Android phones uh, to grow the network and, uh, and you will be rewarded by the network for that. Yeah, yeah and, that, that, and that, that's really cool. I, I really do appreciate that because there are projects, so many projects that really leverage um, people buying, you know, tech that should cost, uh, you know, a uh, hundred dollars and they sell it for you know five times that price just to be able to you know pump their token price to be able to show that they have you know organic growth while in reality they're just you know essentially taking money from customers when they shouldn't even have to do that so i, I as a consumer myself i really do appreciate that so thanks for for going down that 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 route um now we've been, we've been talking for over 45 minutes let me try to close off with some fun, fun things here. Um, I know that you have some really good people on your team. Um, who do you look for to to work, you know, at Nodal to build with you? I mean, you definitely mentioned that the young people that are the young, smart people that want to go out there and get things done is definitely like, you know, part of that list. But what qualities are you looking for in these builders, leaders? and people that are driving Nodal forward? Um, I, we like uh, people who also think different than us because we believe in diversity and we like to confront ideas. And like you mentioned before, you said you are very different from Garrett. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm very different from Garrett and very different from Elliot and Elliot is very different from Garrett as well. So we, we really think that confronting ideas and point of views can actually help spark the best ideas. Um, and uh, so we like people who are creative, uh, see where the things differently, think out of the box. Uh, also people who, uh, who can uh, have the, um, I mean, who, who like to take risk, a lot of risk, um, who are a bit dreamers, uh, people who are creative, um, people who believe they can change the world and uh, also believe uh, in, 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 what, in themselves, what they do, who are passionate. And uh, what is quality is very, very important because um, especially in, in this market where you go through cycles of bull and bear market, I mean, we've been at this for more than six years now, we, and, and we don't give up. And it's very important not to give up and push, even when it's a bit painful, but uh, to have faith in what you do and the vision and, and, and keep on executing. And, uh, uh, and then people who are independent also is very, is very important, specific, specifically if you work remotely uh, and, uh, yeah, accountable. Yeah. Now, I'm going to turn that on its head and say that that's how I want to see the world, not just nodal. I mean, those are some things, some qualities that I would love to see in every single person that might be watching this video or not. Because if that's you and you guys are watching right now, here's what I'll say. Instill that in somebody else, because we would be so much better off with dreamers, with people that do think big, with people that are willing to take risks and make things happen the way that you, Misha, you know, um, Elliot and Garrett kind of came together and said, hey, this is crazy, but let's do it. 
I really appreciate that mindset. I appreciate the heart behind it. And I can't wait to, you know, continue to follow this. Um, I don't even want to call it a project. I don't want to call it a network, but a movement of Nodal and getting things connected everywhere. So thank you so much for, you know, spending the time with me, chatting a little bit. Um, you are, you know, ultimately changing the world. Um, believe it or not, I know that you, you might not hear that a lot and I know it gets lonely at the top. I'll tell you the things you're building, they do have an impact and they can make a difference. Um, sometimes it might not be the whole world, but it might be a smaller section of the world, but that impact is still real and it still impacts people. Even if it's just, in, you know, instilling them the passion and the courage to pursue their dreams and do something big. So thank you for that. I really appreciate what you've done for these kids um, because I see myself in them. I'm, you know, I was one of those kids that had a dream and wanted to do something and people, you know, gave me a hard time. So I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your heart behind it and everything you've done so far. Well, thank you, Action. It's uh, it's it is great to um, yeah to to explain and go down the weeds of uh, what we are building, what we believe in, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's actually uh, just the beginning. It's a long road. <laughs> it's a long road. Well, with that, and, uh, I'm gonna even, make sure that I talk to Garrett. Even if we had from the beginning, even if we had the vision from the beginning. Uh, I mean, there are many things we didn't know how, many problems and challenges we didn't know how we are going to solve it. No, I mean, we're going to have more ahead, but uh, but if you have faith, uh, you, you find solutions along the along the road, yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to make sure that in a little bit, I'll reach out to Garrett, make sure that I get to hear what the, what the pitfalls have been and the things that he struggled with kind of building this network along and get a different perspective. Um, and the same, you know, network that is going to do really big things in the space. So I appreciate your time, buddy. Um, and again, doors always open. You have, you know, always welcome to come back and discuss where you're at, where you're going. You, Elliot, any of the guys over there. Thank you, Action. Thanks a lot. And thank you for having me today. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Maybe, maybe one thing I can add is uh, we really have a fantastic community. Like, uh, and I get more and more surprised each time uh, I see the community doing things uh, for the network, for Nodo. Uh, and I have one example. Sorry if I'm extending a little bit, but we, have, we had this builder in uh, South America, I think Argentina, who uh, actually created a, a hat, so a physical object in the real world. Uh, and um, with a uh, NFC capability, and when you you can scan the, I mean, you can uh, receive information through the NFT, NFC, sorry, and it gives you a, a unique NFT or that represents your cap, uh, and it can be a, a unique, uh, yeah, avatar or a, or a unique uh, digital asset representing basically your cap, and uh, that's things we start to see popping on the network. Uh, some initiatives like that, and I can't wait to see when. Uh, we have tens of thousands of these initiatives and builders really building interesting things out there. So uh, thank you also to the community and people who support us. And thank yeah. you, Action. It's only going to keep growing from here with, with where you guys have been, what you've been through and what you're willing to do for the community itself. So, yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So no, no, no crying. You're just going to keep building. We're all going to be OK here. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks. All right, Misha, you have a great one. Take care now. Thank you, Action.